finish this introduction in Galatians, then we'll go back. The reason I got on this was the issue of recommendation. So here we go back to chapter 1, Galatians, and then we can see that, in fact, this is something of what Paul's talking about. Paul, an apostle, not from men, you see, I don't have credentials, not by men. I didn't meet Jesus in the flesh, or from James, or anyone else. But through Jesus Christ, I was called directly from Christ Jesus and the Father. And it's important that you raised him from the dead because this is the supernatural Christ in heaven because I never met him on earth. So that you have presented you an exo. And that's what he's saying in the first uh, line there. Grace and peace to you from God and our Lord Jesus, who gave himself for our sins, that's his doctrine, that he might deliver us out of the present evil age according to our God the Father. To him be the glory forever and ever. So it sounds like he's going to be, it sounds like he's going to play nice here, right? That's how he starts off. Like he's going to, no, he doesn't play nice. Because the very, very next line, he plays mean. I marvel, he starts his complaints. His complaints are in every letter. That you so quickly move away from him who called you in the grace of Christ to another gospel. There it is, right from the get-go. He's angry. Who's he angry at? His communities that he set down in Asia Minor. What other gospel have they gone to? Some Gnostic gospel, some gospel of uh, Marcion, Simon Mag. No, no, they've gone back to the Hebrew gospel of the other apostles. So, what's he say here? The one, the circumcision one, good or bad? I'm not saying it's right or wrong. I don't want. To, I'm just telling you what the historical is. So look at, you know, I marvel how quick you are to fall back. Which is not another, but there are some troubling you. See, we know who the troublers are, because at the end of Galatians we hear that they're circumcised. The some troubling you at the end of Galatians is made quite clear, and they're the same as in, as in 2 Corinthians, the super-apostles, the Hebrews, the, the pseudo-apostles, who say their servants are righteous, but are servants of the devil. Okay, well, some unusual, the son is the tip-off, who trouble you, he doesn't want to name who. He doesn't want to call them Paul, he doesn't want to call them John, James, Peter, and so on. <coughs> some uh, trouble you and desire to twist the gospel of Christ. They're twisting the gospel. Not what I do, but they're doing. Now, even if we or an angel from heaven should preach any other gospel to you, then that which we have preached to you, let him be accursed. So he's starting the cursing right there that he accuses them of doing. So look, as we've said before, uh, I also now say it again. If anyone preaches another gospel contrary to what you have received from me, as it were, let him be accursed. So there's the, there, there it is. There it is right from the get-go in, in Galatians. It's my way or the highway, and the curses fall behind it. Just like they're cursing him, presumably, he's cursing them. And the scrolls are full of the cursing of backsliders and so on and so forth. He's full of it, too, and they're flinging these curses back and forth. One last one before I get yours. Now, look at here. You've heard that I'm trying to make things easier on people. Do I persuade men or God? Line 10. Or do I seek to please men? Am I trying to please men by my doctrine? No, look, I just cursed everyone. I'm not trying to please men, you know. I'm sure this is not the interpretation of God in a church that I'm giving here. For did I not receive it from men? Or for I did not receive it from men. Going back to the original thing, I didn't get this from men. So, so it's really clever um, rhetoric again. Uh, I'm not pleasing men because I didn't get it from men. Not according to men. I received it, uh, uh, I, I didn't receive it from men, or was I taught it by men, I received it as a heavenly revelation of the, of the Lord Jesus Christ. And if you look at the word revelation in the Greek there, what is the word you see in the Greek? Here's your time to use your, uh, your, um, your, uh, um, what's it called? Um, yeah, your interlinear. What's, uh, what is that in, uh, in, in, Chapter one, line third, line end of line twelve. Can you read enough Greek to see that? Uh, A revelation. What's the Greek? Apocalypsis. It's an apocalypsis. It's, it's, that's the word. I received an apocalypsis 
from heaven. So the word apocalypsis, right there in your Greek, if you know fraternity Greek, that's enough. Uh, you got your letters there. Uh, I received that, and that, that as a, it's a heavenly revelation, an apocalypsis. So he's getting it as an apocalypse deal. Uh, and, and then he goes on to uh, justify himself. Look, you heard of my previous life and persecuting the church of God and destroying it. And I was zealous, uh, line 14, and you look and you see, and it's zelotes, and uh, I was zealous, and so on and so forth, etc. And then finally, uh, I went to Arabia after I changed my mind about things, and I returned again to Damascus. It doesn't speak about a vision on the road to um, to. Um, Damascus. He said that when God chose to reveal his son in me, that I might teach his gospel about him to the nations, I did not talk it over with any flesh and blood. So the church in, in Jerusalem didn't know that this was my gospel. The church in Jerusalem didn't know that their enemy has now become a, 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 a preacher. They didn't give me this gospel. I got it from heaven. This guy is rich. He's not the kind of person you want to move. I mean, if I'm ahead of a movement, I got this guy under me. I got serious concerns and I got serious problems. The point is, he wins. It often happens that he, was, but he does not represent the Jerusalem position. He admits it right there. Uh, you know, I got this as a heavenly revelation. This guy used to persecute the church. He persecuted someone to death. It's like saying, um, who was that guy? That was the Nixon guy. That was the dirty tricks guy. Uh, Chuck Colson. Ready or? Uh, Chuck Colson. Chuck Colson suddenly gets God, and now he's got a gospel, and, and that wins the whole competition of, let's say, uh, differing gospels, and that's the one that we follow? Well, I, for one, am not going to follow that gospel. I'll follow the gospel of James the Righteous, because James the Righteous was the closest, the closest living member of uh, the family of um, Jesus, and he was with him his whole lifetime. And if I were to, uh, asked who was I going to follow, someone who, who knew a person his whole life, was with him his whole life, was martyred to some extent in the same way, and uh, succeeded him in Palestine, or some outsider with a Roman citizenship who has visions of um, heaven and uh, is trained in the Greek rhetorical style and is an upper class family, uh, who am I going to follow? Well, I, as I say in my book, James, know the answer to that right off. I follow James. But uh, the answer of history and everyone, from the time of Constantine to uh, later times, to Tolstoy, to uh, uh, you name it, all the greatest thinkers have followed the gospel of Paul. And um, to my mind, that's, uh, that's where the issue comes, which 